Mr. Jared, I absolutely love your videos and stories of our history and ancestors. I'm Karen Gibbs, and an old woman myself now, haha. -ha. And I have an amazing set of stories I'm going to share with you. About a journal I found back in the 1950s, when we moved into an old house. And it sent my life into a wild spiral. Back in the mid-1950s, I was a young gal of 14, an only child and very lonely. I was also quite shy, had no friends. Daddy was a coal miner, and we was happy as a small family, but we definitely struggled. Daddy ended up, him and a lot of them lost their jobs there at the coal mines, so everybody had to look for something else to do. So. We moved into a little bit larger house than we was used to. Daddy had found him another job, working for a wealthy man. Now the house was very old, and it was in Lower East Tennessee, and had an attic that was turned into a bedroom, but Lord, it was so plain. But I loved it from the minute I seen it. It had an enormous window in it, along with the beautiful view of the mountains. I wanted it, like it called to me. Well, Mom and Daddy said I could have it. I was moving my stuff into it, and Daddy had brought my bed and my side table up while I was decorating, adding some color to it, curtains, things like that. Well, after a couple of days, it was set up. But where I had my bed set, one day I noticed the sun shining in and was casting a heck of a reflection, so I decided to scoot the bed over. When I did, a loose board popped up. I figured it was just old and, you know, figured it just needed a nail, and I was about to mash it back down with my foot. When I see a book, I moved the board and I reached down and grabbed it. It was a journal. Naturally, being a nosy young, I opened it up. Oddly enough, it never had any last names in it. Not one last name throughout its pages. On the front of it, it had one name. Thomas. I found myself in a spiral reading about his life. A young, lonely teen like myself. The earliest entry was 1882. I don't care to tell you, between chores and school, I'd have my nose plowed into it. He loved, he laughed, he cried, with me doing the same thing as I read. I finally had a friend that would never know about me. But it started out. Daddy woke up this morning and went hunting like he always does. Complained about the heavy fog, but still went. He asked me if I wanted to go, but I said no. Mama made biscuits, and I looked forward to breakfast this morning because Uncle Virgil brought us a little bit of pork, and Mama's cooking some of that up to go along with the eggs I gathered this morning. I swore my time. That sitting here Mama has, Bessie hates me. That's the honoriest old thing you ever did see. I sat at the table and found myself staring at the sun shining one little ray through Mama's curtains and watched as Daddy's pipe smoke rolled through it. Sure was a chilly morning. I don't see how them little songbirds can be so happy when it's that chilly, but they sure do sing pretty. I'm looking forward to preaching tomorrow. Mama finished my new dress shirt. She made me one last year, but I've already grown out of it. 
Got to thinking, too. Ain't no gal gonna look at a feller wearing a dress shirt with a little sun embroidered on each shoulder of it. <laughs> she did give me Granddaddy's pocket watch, though. I was mighty proud of that. Noon. I went and busted up a little kindling. Helped Mama build up far. Cause we was getting a little crawly. Lord, it ain't easy standing around an old stove to cook when it's already hot. We usually open up the back doors and the windows. Mama says on days like this, you can't buy a breeze. This evening, Daddy come in from the fields. We sat out on the porch, and Daddy said, Thomas, be a watching out tomorrow. Mr. and Mrs. Hankel is a coming to have you write a letter to her sister. I told him you wouldn't mind none. I said, okay, Daddy. I reckon I'm the only one in our area that knows how to read and write. Most others didn't care nothing about schooling. Most folks here in the mountains can't read nor write nor do much cipher. But they get along just as good without it for the most part. I do think when they sell stuff in town or do their trading at times, they get taken cause they really don't know if the storekeep is what they're offering is fire or not. But I do help when I can by writing letters, notes, reading letters, and so on. Mom and Daddy said they was mighty proud of me for learning. But I went not to learn, but just to have something to do away from the house and be around others my age. Even though they weren't but five of us there that come every day, most stayed home helping their mamas and daddies. Just seemed kindly unfair to me. One day when I'm married and have youngins of my own, I ain't gonna make them do grown-up stuff. Daddy ended the night with a jar of liquor and some fiddling, while me and Mama danced around out in the yard. Sure was fun. Don't get me wrong, Daddy's a good man, mighty good man, till he starts a drinking. Whenever he starts a drinking, I just kind of keep away from him. Well, now I'm going to put on my night clothes, say my prayers, and look at the night sky out my big window, and just let my mind wander till I fall asleep, like I always do.